Hey guys, how's it going? It's Travis Wards again in the Forest Hill Film Lab. And today I wanted to take some time out of my day and talk to you guys about depth of field. Um, but, you know, in order to really talk about depth of field, I feel like I have to talk about a couple other things as well. So we're also going to be going over aperture today, how aperture affects your overall image, and we're also going to talk exactly about how our cameras work so we can have a better understanding of what's going on when we're using them. So this is going to be a multi-part video, but I'm pretty excited about it. This is one of, one of my favorite things about photography. This is one of the things that really changed things for me personally. So I'm going to try to explain it to you guys so you can totally understand it the same way that I do. So let's get started. So uh, here's a little backstory for me. Uh, when I started taking photography classes, I already had a general understanding of exposure, and I really felt like I knew everything that was going on. Um, a couple weeks into the class, we learned, we had a lecture on depth of field, and we learned about how stopping your aperture down makes your, your image sharper and makes the background sharper and all that stuff. And when I realized this, I thought, oh my goodness, like this whole time, I just thought these numbers were numbers. I thought they had one job and one job only, and that was to restrict light or allow light. I didn't realize that in the process of restricting and allowing more or less light, the lens aperture was actually changing the image overall. Uh, when I realized this, things really started to uh, get clearer for me. I started to understand photography a whole lot better. So I want to explain it to you guys, because once this happened, I realized that changing your aperture is the, it's the number one way that you could put your own creativity into an image, and it's the number one way that you could change an image looking from one, one thing to the next with your settings and your settings only. So... Um, what I want to explain to you guys is basically when I realized how the camera worked, I realized how all of this stuff started to make more sense. So first and foremost, I want to talk to you guys about your SLR. How does the SLR actually work? Um, it never really occurred to me because I just was used to what I was used to, but until someone explained it, that your lens is always open to the widest aperture possible. And the reason being is that you wouldn't be able to see your image if you had it stopped down to the desired aperture. So what that means is if I have my camera set to f8, my aperture is going to close when I take the picture, but right now it's always at 1.2. So for a lot of people, you could focus on a close-up flower and you see that blurry background, and then when you take the picture, the picture doesn't really turn out the same way you expected it to. The reason is because your lens is always at the widest aperture, because that's how you see. So once I realized that, you know, wow, the, the lens is actually stopping down when I take the picture, I started to understand that I, my image is not exactly what I'm seeing all of the time. Exactly what you're seeing is only wide open. You're only seeing your camera's lens wide open with no stopping of the aperture. So here's just for an example. I, uh, I'll take the back off of this so we can have a little bit more light go through. I'm going to put it on bulb mode. Like I said, so right now, as I'm focusing, the lens is wide open, allowing all of my light into the camera. But when I press the, the shutter down, you'll see that the lens actually stops down. And you can see it from the back as well. It stops down to the desired aperture that you have it set to. So what that means is that although I'm focusing on the camera in front of me and the background's really blurry and soft, what's actually happening when I take the picture is that my lens is stopping down to a different aperture. So, once this all started to make sense to me, I understood that, you know, my settings have a lot to do with my photos. So here is, that's basically the first thing I wanted to show you guys, is that the way our SLR works is that we're always focusing wide open, and then the camera stops down to the desired aperture. So in order to really, really know what we're going to get with a photo, we have to check the depth of field preview, which would be this button here. So I have it at 5.6, and I can press this button and stop my lens down, and then see my scene for what it really is. Um, so that is the first part I wanted to talk to you guys about. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's a little thing that I wasn't really aware of, but once I was made aware of it, I never forgot that. So something to always remember is you're always looking through your lens wide open. So to get what you're really looking at, you have to be shooting wide open. Otherwise, you're going to get a different outcome. So that's the first part. The second part I want to explain to you guys is depth of field. This is the most important part. 
um, what is depth of field? What what exactly is it? How does it work? I'm sure you guys have heard the term shallow depth of field before. Never really, no no one ever really says it's a real deep depth of field, but it still makes sense. So. Something for you guys to understand is that when you're focusing your camera, whether it be manual focus or autofocus, you're never focusing on a subject. You're never focusing on your buddy Greg. You're always focusing on a distance. It's always a certain amount of feet or inches away. So if my buddy Greg is five feet away, I'm not focusing on him, I'm focusing five feet away. So I'm gonna draw you guys a little diagram here. So here is my buddy Greg. Here's my camera. It's a pretty bad looking camera. So here's my camera, right? Greg, he's at five feet. We'll put him 10 feet, actually. I wanna, I wanna have him 10 feet away. So that is our focus distance. Our distance of focus is 10 feet. Now our depth of field, that is gonna be basically how much depth our focus has. So if we're shooting at wide open 1.2, we've got zero depth of field. Our focus point is here and here only, right? But as I stop this aperture down, as I close the aperture down, let me see, I got a different lens here. As I close it down from wide open, that depth is gonna grow. So say here is wide open, we're gonna do a big aperture. As I stop down, the depth will grow. So instead of Greg's just his face in the, in the focus, we're gonna have his whole body. And the depth is going to grow and grow. And these are all gonna get aperture values in just a second. So this one here, let's see. This would be like 1.4. This is gonna be F2. This is gonna be 2.8, 4, 4, 5.6. This is obviously not an accurate representation of how the apertures do, but it gives you an idea. So, what this means is, as I stop my aperture down, I'm gaining basically a cushion. So if I am 10 feet away and my, my lens aperture is wide open, my depth of field is very shallow. We're gonna have a soft, blurry background, and I'm gonna show you guys some examples in a little bit. But as we stop our aperture down, what's happening is the lens is aperture is closing and it's causing the light to refract. This is called refraction. And what that does is it makes this light squeeze into a smaller hole. And when you make light squeeze into a smaller hole, it gets sharper. So the more you stop down, the sharper your image gets overall. So we're at 1.4, the background was soft. Once we're out to 5.6, the background's gonna start getting more and more detail because now we have tighter light rays coming through the lens. So like I mentioned, when we take our picture at f8, although everything in the background will be sharp in our camera, we'll take the picture at f8, it will close down, and we will get our depth of field. So um, basically, the depth goes like this, closer and further. It gets both ways a cushion, and that way you could basically have multiple people in a photo. So if you wanted to shoot Greg and his buddies, you could put it at 5.6, and what that's gonna do is, it's gonna put everybody within that cushion of focusing room. So this is called your hyperfocal distance. The amount of room that you have at a certain focal length distance, how much depth of field do you have? So uh, basically I'm gonna kind of explain it to you guys a little bit more detailed numbers wise. I've got this depth of field calculator. Um, I just downloaded it, it's very simple. And this isn't something that I would ever use to calculate anything, but it's a great tool for understanding. So, like I said, we're at 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens at 10 feet. If we're at 1.2, our depth of field is 10 inches, which means if our distance is 10 feet here, 10 feet, the amount of distance we have on each end of 10 feet is about one inch. What is it? It's about, yeah, nine inches. This would be nine inches. And then this would be 10 and a half. Wow, can I do this upside down? There. So it's just 10 inches, it's nothing. And as we increase our aperture, we'll go to 5.6. Now the depth is feet. Now it's, if you focus at 10 feet, 5.6 is anywhere from four feet 
man, there's no way I'm going to draw an upside down four. There we go. Anywhere from four feet all the way to 12 feet. No way I could do that one. So now, if we focus at 10 feet, anywhere from four feet to 12 feet is in focus. This is an absolute understanding of depth of field. By stopping down our aperture, we're gaining distance in the front and we're gaining distance in the back and this whole entire range will be in focus. Now Greg could have a couple buddies with him and they'll also be in focus. And the guys in the front, they'll be in focus too because we're at 5.6 and this guy's got a broken leg. So that's a way to understand it, is if you think about it as a buffer. And our, like I said, our focus is always a distance. So there's that portion, and that's kind of understanding depth of field. And we're going to go a little bit more in depth. i got some examples to show you guys. But um, the next thing I want to show you is kind of what's going on on your lens. For us older film users, we're going to talk about um, kind of the numbers on the lens and how they correspond as well. So let's get into that. All right, so like I mentioned, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about the camera and, uh, you know, basically about understanding how your aperture changes your overall image. Um, so here, let's have a look at, this is just a basic Canon AE-1, and uh, this camera's lens basically has all of the things you could ever ask for on a lens. It gives you all the information you need and then some. So here I'm going to set, uh, we got two different... Uh, ranges we have feet and meters on here I'm gonna set it to 10 feet because that's what we were talking about earlier and as you can see there's these there's these little tiny numbers here with dashes next to them and what that's doing is that's indicating to us what our hyperfocal distance will be so uh, you know I'm gonna shoot at f8 and what that tells me is if I focus at 10 feet my focus range on here will be from about 7 feet to 15 feet. So that gives me a, you know, an effective range of focus that's about 5 or 6 feet big, I guess, you know, wide. So because of that, I know that I could shoot a photo with two or three people in it, and I know that their whole entire face and body will be in focus. Now the reason that this is important is because a lot of us will do different jobs and some, some photographers out there love shooting wide open because shooting wide open is so dreamy and it looks awesome and the backgrounds are so cool. But when we're shooting family portraits or something, it's really, I want to say it's irresponsible to be shooting wide open when you're shooting more than one person because like I demonstrated earlier, our depth of field is only 9 or 10 inches. Now, if you could fit ten, or if you could fit a whole family of people within nine or ten inches, then you're the best photographer I've ever seen, and you could do whatever you want. But the truth of the matter is, shooting wide open is not always the best. Sometimes it's beneficial to stop down to a 2.8 or an f/4 just to gain that little bit of buffer, that little bit of safety room, so then we could get all of our subjects in focus, but still have that blurry, buttery background that we like. Um, Oh, sorry about that. My dog's just hacking up over here. You all right? So because of that, it's, it's good to know what these apertures are really doing. They are only adding the smallest bit of detail to the background with every single step. But by the end of it, by the time you're at f16, everything will be in focus. And, you know, that's a great aperture for landscape shots and things like that. So uh, I wanted to show you guys a couple examples here. Uh, I went out and I took some photos of a small bench. I tried to put it about 10 feet away from me. And in the foreground, there's also some trees, some small trees that I tried to put in the foreground and my mom's house in the background. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop down one stop every photo, starting at 1.4 and ending at f16. And it's going to show you exactly the increments in which the detail comes through. It's very small, but by making these changes, you have complete control over your image. You could decide ahead of time what aperture you want to shoot at and therefore choose your shutter accordingly. Um, I, I usually say that, you know, it's best if you're going out to shoot photos, it's best to choose one and figure out the other. Um, choosing your aperture is the most creative way that you could change your image. So that's normally what I do. I'll go outside and I'll think, huh, I want to shoot at f2 right now because you know that'll give me enough 
depth of field for the whole face to be in focus, but everything else behind someone's body is going to fall out. So I'll set my camera to f2, and then you figure out your recording shutter speed to match your aperture based on, you know, light conditions and ISO and all those things. Um, you know, it's not ever it's not ever beneficial to be changing both settings at once. So it's usually best if you just decide one based on how much depth of field you want. Really, that's the most key thing is deciding how much depth you want. <laughs> you know, it could be none or some or a lot. So uh, I'm going to show you guys some examples so you can get an understanding. And I just, like I said, I shot a stationary bench, but if this was a subject, a person, um, it, it'd be no different because focus is based on a distance, not on a subject or an object. So um, take a look at these examples. I'm going to mark them, label them uh, so you guys can see, and uh, I'll see you guys in just a second. So now that you guys have had a chance to look at, you know, how depth of field or how aperture affects our depth of field for a subject that's 10 feet away, you get a general understanding of, you know, the small incremental changes that happen. It's, it's not drastic. Uh, they're just tiny little increments and by the end of it, almost everything becomes detailed and easy to see and you can't really tell where my focus distance is because at f16, uh, just about everything becomes clear and easy to see. Um, but also, you know, depth of field has a different effect at closer distances. Um, things that are more close up, the background's going to fall out a lot more, and the incremental changes won't be so, so um, drastic even. You know, you could focus on something that's only a few feet away, and your background will remain soft even, even up till f11. You could achieve that soft background without compromising sharpness in your subject. Um, I'm going to show you guys another couple examples. This is just some photos of a wind chime that I shot, but it was very close to me. It was probably about four or five feet away, portrait distance, close up portrait distance. And uh, what it's going to show you is, you know, at 1.4, what the background does is it gets those nice swirly bokeh. It's beautiful, but, um, you know, sometimes it's beneficial to shoot at a 2.8, and you'll still get that background, but you'll have that little bit of buffer so someone's whole entire face will be in focus or someone's head will be in focus and uh, nothing will be soft. So I'm going to show you guys a couple more examples of a closer up image shot wide open all the way to f16 so you can have a general understanding of you know how depth of field affects a closer focus. It's still you know when you focus close it doesn't get quite as sharp entirely because your focus distance isn't so far away as 10, 10 or 12 feet. So here's a couple more examples I'm going to show you guys just so you can get an understanding of like that really soft background and how sharp it will get by the time it's at f16. So now that you guys have had a chance to take a look at some of these examples, you know, I, I feel like you can really understand what difference that the aperture makes. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier on in my video, I used to think that these numbers were just meant for doing one job and one job only, restricting light or allowing light. And this was mostly because uh, early on in my shooting career, I shot a lot of BMX. Uh, my focus distance was usually infinity. I had no sort of depth of field uh, grasp. You know, I wasn't really messing with depth of field. I was uh, mostly shooting things at a distance. Everything was always in focus, even shooting wide open. And I didn't really get to understand what was actually happening inside my camera. But, um, you know, I can't stress enough that choosing your aperture 
consciously choosing your aperture is the best way to overall uh, affect your image the way that you want to. By choosing what aperture you're going to shoot something at uh, decides how your overall outcome will be and it's a choice on your part. So, um, you know, some cameras have like these auto modes where it's got like a, a kid running and then there's like mountains and then like portraiture or whatever the hell it is. And all these auto modes are setting your camera's aperture for you. You know, the mountain one is setting it at f16. The portrait one is setting it at f4 or 5.6. The kid running is shooting wide open so you get the fastest shutter speed. Um, but, you know, it's they're just auto modes because, you know, they, they correlate. But all of these subjects, all of these subject matter, they have a desired aperture that works best with them. Like I mentioned, landscapes are great to be shooting at f16 or f22 because you want sharp everything. Um, shooting portraiture at f4 or 5.6 is going to allow the whole entire subject's face to be in focus, but if you're close enough, the background will still be soft and blurry. Um, and shooting wide open is obviously that dramatic effect. Um, it could really separate your subject from the background. Uh, it's a great way if you're in an ugly place that you don't want people to notice. Uh, it's a great way to kind of drown that out and just focus all the attention on your subject. Um, but, but like I mentioned earlier, it's not great to just shoot wide open all the time because then you're not learning anything. Then you're not changing anything. You're not in control at that point. You're just deciding to put it on autopilot. Um, I urge you guys to go out and choose what your aperture should be and then figure out what your shutter should be accordingly. Um, a great way of doing this is you know, to shoot on aperture priority. I don't see anything wrong with shooting on aperture priority because... Shutter speed doesn't affect overall image quite the same as your aperture does. So when you're shooting on aperture priority, you're making those, those crucial decisions and you're just trusting your camera to set your shutter speed on the fly um, for you. So I, I think that shooting on aperture priority is a great way of figuring out how your camera works and also seeing the different outcomes that you get by changing your aperture. Um, another thing I mentioned is your depth of field preview button. Every camera's got something a little different. Um, on this one, it's this little plunger here. And then, oh, maybe it's not. Is that it? That should be, but it doesn't seem to be doing it. I thought it was, but maybe not. Huh. Well, every camera's got a little different one. Nikons always have a button right here. Even on the digital cameras, they've maintained to have that button. And by doing that, you're stopping your lens down. You'll get to see truly what will be in focus in your foreground and your background. And you can get a general idea of how this whole aperture thing works. Um, it's all just this very mysterious thing called refraction. Um, and, you know, refraction is most notably used on pinhole cameras. There's no lens because the hole is so so tiny that the light squeezing through that hole makes a perfectly sharp image on the other side of it. You're refracting light to fit through a small space. Um, our eyeballs also refract light. They make light fit into our pupils, into our corneas, and it creates an image inside of our head. Um, that's how it works. So um, refraction is basically today's word of the day. It is the reason why our aperture does what it does. It's the reason why we have depth of field and it's the reason why photography is so important and special is uh, refraction. So anyways, I hope you guys learned something. I really feel like I summed it all up pretty quickly when I did the diagram with me and my buddy Greg. Um, it's a little bit messy, but this is pretty much it. When you focus on a subject, it's a distance, and by stopping down your aperture, you're increasing that distance. Think of it as a hula hoop around your subject, you know? By stopping down, you're making that hula hoop bigger because it's increasing the subject's focus around him as well as, you know, your distance that you've chosen. So. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have been enjoying my videos, please uh, subscribe below. I, uh, I've been trying to make some more videos while I have my friend's camera, so I hope you guys have enjoyed them. And uh, until next time, keep on shooting.